Happy Easter and welcome to another 10 tips and tricks, this time for the KDE Terminal Emulator console. Console allows you to execute terminal commands, but it also allows you to switch to another shell. So I could switch to a fish shell if I have it installed. But what if you want to have the default terminal shell to be fish or ZSH or whatever other shell that you'd like to use? You can set this up under settings, edit current profile, and here you can just simply set the command for the default shell that you want to use. Tip number two, change the appearance, change the look and feel of your terminal. So you can go to appearance and let me move this to the side here because if I hover over the different color schemes and fonts you can see you get a preview of this live directly in your shell which is a pretty nice and handy thing. And of course you also have the option to change the font and the font size. So I like to have a larger font instead of the only 10, uh, the size of 10 points when it comes to monospace fonts, but you can set whatever you like to here. Tip number three, enable blinking. Remember the cool sci-fi movies or hacker movies that showed the blinking cursors on a terminal and hackers hacking some commands into it? If you want to emulate this, you can go under cursor and then enable blinking here. As you can see here, my cursor is now blinking. You no cannot only enable blinking here, you also have the option to change the shape of the blinking cursor. Either the block, which is the default, or an I-beam, which looks like this, or L-beam, I don't know. Or you can do it underlined, which will look like this, more like the classic movies, I would think so. Tip number four, transparent background. Of course, you have a nice wallpaper, you want to have this a bit translucent through your terminal session. What you can do is just go to color schemes and font and edit the current color scheme that you have. Or you can create also a new one if you'd like to. But there you can set the background transparency and let's set it to, I think, like 17% looks fine. And as you can see here, yeah, I can see now my uh, wallpaper translucent uh, basically behind the terminal. And is it this is live as you can see here. Tip number five, scroll back size. Just go to settings, edit current profile again, go to scrolling. And here by default it is I think 1000 lines. Here you can set the scroll back size. Just like for example if you have a command like uh, find and you can see it lot creates lots and lots of output and if I go here scroll up, up, up to find my uh, thing. It has a default buffer size of 1000 lines. Um, I like to set it to 4000 because I'm working with um, sometimes um, compiling lots of applications and then the error message is way on top and not on the bottom most of the times and I have to scroll up and up and up and if it's only 1000 lines and it's cut off and uh, then I don't get to the error message and have to read some log files or run it, run it again and save it into a log file or something like this. This is why I set it to uh, 4000 lines. You can see a little warning here, when using this option the scrollback data will be saved to RAM, so you need a lot of RAM for this, depending on how much lines you want to save. This is why I would not recommend going to the unlimited option, but if you have enough RAM, just like 36 or 16 gigabytes, I can also recommend setting this um, to unlimited if you'd like to. Tip number six, uh, notifications for finished processes go out of the settings here and uh, let's go to let's go to my downloads directory and I had a find command here search for PNG files and what if I have this command and I'm, I know that this will take a while and I don't want to waste uh, time uh, waiting for it I will do just simply something else what I can do is just simply set in view monitor for silence this works for every major application that's out there that's running in the console if they don't give you a nice notification that they've finished 
you can have a monitor for silence which will wait until it's finished and the terminal is not doing anything not giving you any output anymore then it will notify you that it's silent now and this is what i want to turn on here it has a, li a little delay and i can just execute this command minimize it let it run in the background and uh, go here and work with my documents and with my files and folders for example if i like to and then you see I got a console uh, notification here. I can click on this notification. It will open up the console again. And it is basically telling me that, yeah, I have now um, finished the command. Tip number seven, uh, bookmarks. In the console, it allows you to set different bookmarks, just like in a browser or the file manager dolphin here you can see i have several bookmarks to go to downloads to my work directory and so on i can do the same for my um, terminal just by creating some bookmarks here for my work directory for example uh, kernel 5613 if i click on this this will directly go into this directory and i can work with the files there or if i want to go to my icons directory i can go there as well and of course i have the option to change the icons of those bookmarks just by going to edit bookmarks and then click on this right click change icon and i have the option to change the icon this way tip number eight split window sometimes it's handy to just simply let some commands run in a different terminal instead of open up multiple terminals what you can do is just simply split the terminal into two just by hitting control bracket open or you can just go to view, split view, split view, left, right, split view, top, bottom. You have the option here to choose between this. So let's just go and say I want to open up this. And then I want to split it horizontally, top, bottom. And I have this. Now I can execute here a uh, command like this and work like this. And... Uh, can execute here something else and have uh, a terminal multiplexer basically running without using a terminal multiplexer because console is also a terminal multiplexer in this way and you can see i can move this freely i can change the size of the different terminals here and of course i can create as many terminals if i want to i can create as many configurations if i want to uh, works pretty nice and handy tip number nine open files with mouse by default if you scroll over a file over a link usually it will underline it over a file usually it won't but if you want to enable this you can go to settings edit current profile mouse and under miscellaneous you have the option to underline files if you have this checked what this allows you to do is just simply let me uncheck it first and show you what what happens if i'm over here you can see nothing's underlined. If I right click on this, nothing really happens. Even if I double click it, I can op only open the file manager. Uh, and this will open the file manager in this current directory, which is icons, where I don't want to go because this is like in download somewhere. So what I can do is click on underline files, hit apply here, and this will underline files now. And I have to close these terminals again and you have to reload then usually let me go to my downloads directory again and execute the find command uh, find i was searching for pngs in this case and what it allows me to do now is it is underlying now my uh, files here and what i can do now is just simply right click here and then open file and will open the file in my favorite in this case image editor and i can do the same for other files of course if i'd like to which is pretty handy tip number 10 uh, drag and drop text yeah you have the option to drag and drop text you can see there are some options here in edit profile again mouse and here copy text as html and the miscellaneous you have the option to use uh, allow drag and drop menu for files and urls but you also have the option uh, draw control scroll view to to zoom and require control key for drag and drop so this allows you to just simply if you want to copy some text like this here 
hold the control key and now you can sorry have this marked here now the control key and now you can drag and drop the text here let go and you can see I have the text here right now. So this allows you to drag and drop text even when you are in a terminal. And of, of course very handy if you're in the in this mode and you want to drag, I don't know, some information just like this here. You want to take this, you can just drag and drop it to the other terminal. So this is easily possible, especially if you edit mo multiple files, for example, right next to each other with VI or something like this it might be handy. So these are the 10 tips and tricks, but it's Easter. I have a nice little Easter egg for you as well. Uh, bonus, uh, copy move files per drag and drop is also possible. You go to your current profiles, you go to mouse, and uh, there you have the option to, under miscellaneous, uh, you have the option to uh, disable a drag and drop menu for files and URLs. And this is checked by default in your console versions. If you uncheck this, what it allows you to do, let me first show you what will happen if I drag a file, like this file in here. What will happen is it will just simply copy the location of this file in here. And when I disable this, you can see I'm in my downloads folder here right now. What will happen now when I will drag and drop this file over here, I get a m menu which allows me to move this file into this direct uh, directory, copy this file into this directory, or link this file to this directory, or just paste the location, which is a default behavior. I just link it here, and then I can see under downloads that I will have a link to the... Mm, how was the file called? 2020. You can see I have now the link to my home directory. So this is the bonus tip. I hope you liked this little video. Subscribe, stay safe, stay healthy, be careful. And that's everything for this little video. Until the next time, bye.